Numerical Computation, Chapter 5, Additional Video Number 2. You can view this video after you finish the additional video number 1 of this chapter. Here we look at another method which is also an improved version of Newton's method. This is called Halley's method. The method would improve the convergence to even a cubic convergence, which is one order higher than Newton's method. And the higher convergence is only achieved with more assumptions on the function. So let's consider a given function f, um, which shall be in C2, that means the first derivative and the second derivative are both continuous function. And we require them to be given also. And we have initial guess x0. So the Halley's method is an iteration method which takes this form here. It might look a bit strange why it takes this form. And uh, we'll go through some derivations. So we will label this method as equation 1 in this video. So it has a rather complicated expression. It has f, f prime, and then down here is f prime square minus an f multiplied by f double derivative. So we use all the information that's given. There are several ways to derive the formula. And here in this video, we'll consider two of them. Let's go through the first derivation. Recall that Newton's method approximated the function fx by a linearization at xk at each iteration. This approximation matches the function value f at xk as well as the first derivative f prime at xk. And now, instead of polynomials, one can actually use other functions. So, let's consider a function we call it phi x, which is a over x plus b plus c. Here, a, b, and c are coefficients to be determined. And we put constraints on this function the function must satisfy three conditions at the point xk. So first, the function at xk shall equal to f, and also the derivative of the function phi should match the derivative of f at xk, and as well as the second derivative. Now we can write out the function here on the right, so we basically have this equals f at xk, and then differentiate phi once in x, we get this function at xk, and that shall be f prime, and then differentiate this further, we get this function, and evaluate it at xk must equal to the second derivative of f at xk. So we have three coefficients a, b, and c, and we have three conditions, three equations they must satisfy. Note that each of these equations are now a nonlinear function. Well, however, it's not really a hard work to solve this nonlinear function. Give it a try and see if you can get the answers, and if you solve them, you will find the expressions for a, b, and c, they're all expressed in terms of the data, which is the function f and its derivative at the point xk. You will get all these. So a takes this form, and b takes this form, and c takes this form. If you wish, you might pause the video and try to work it out. 
And now, to find the next approximation, xk plus 1, we do a similar thing as we did in Newton's method. We find 0 for the function phi. So we set phi, xk plus 1 is 0. This means that's the expression for phi, right? We plug that in and we solve this for xk plus 1. Now that is a rather simple task. It gives us this expression. xk plus 1 will simply be negative b minus a over c. Now recall a, b, and c, they were solved on the previous page. We have the expressions for them. We can plug them in here and uh, after some manipulations and simplifications, this would exactly give us Halley's iteration. Feel free to pause the video and work out the detail. Now we look at another derivation. Derivation number two. So we define a function psi, psi x equals fx over square root of f prime x in absolute value. We see that the function psi would have the same root as fx, provided that the f prime at the root is not zero. And then with this definition, I can also compute the derivative of the psi. By the quotient rule, I will get this expression. And then we apply Newton's method to find a root for psi of x. And this would give us xk plus 1 as an iterative method of the previous xk, xk minus psi xk over psi prime. And here the function psi and psi prime they're all given. So it's just to plug them in and you will get that. And you already see this would cancel that. There are simplifications and this easily leads to Haller's formula. Okay, so here is a second derivation of the same formula. Now let's look at convergence. We will use Taylor theorem and uh, derivation 1 to derive the cubic convergence for Halley's iteration. So let now r be a single root for fx. That means f at r is 0, and we assume that all the derivatives f prime at r, f second prime at r is not 0. Now, given an index k, we aim at showing the following relation. xk plus 1 minus r in absolute value shall be bounded by some constant m times xk minus r in absolute value to the power 3. And this is exactly the cubic convergence, if we can show it. We begin with using Taylor's theory for the function f. We expand f of r at the point xk. So Taylor theory will give us this expression. So f at r can be expressed as values of f evaluated at xk and its derivatives at xk. We write out the first three terms, which gives us a, a quadratic polynomial. And we can then um, lump all the remaining terms into this, like the leading arrow term, which contains a third derivative and a power of 3 of the distance r minus xk. 
and here cosi 1 is some value that lies between x, k and r. We chose this point f r and knowing that r is a root, so f of r actually equals 0. And now we also write out the Taylor series for the function phi, which we defined in the derivation 1. Recall that the phi is defined such that it matches f, f prime, and f double prime at the point x, k. So if we write out the Taylor expansion for phi r at x, k, then the first three term would exactly match that of f. Therefore, this will be the first three terms that are the same plus the leading error term. By Taylor theorem, this will be the third derivative of phi of cosi and then multiply by the distance r minus x k to the cube. And here cosi is some value that lies between r and x k. We see now these two Taylor series have the same first three terms. Then we can subtract these two equations with each other and uh, also using the fact that the left hand side here is actually zero. So after we subtract, we will just get phi r at the left hand side and the right hand side, all these terms will cancel we'll just end up with this term, subtract that term. Okay, so here is that written. So by subtraction, now we have phi r equals the subtraction of the two terms on the right-hand side. And then we also see that 1, 6 and r minus x k to the cube is a common factor, which we take out and then what remains in the bracket is the subtraction of these two third derivatives. And using now further that phi at xk plus 1 is 0, we call that's how we actually obtain xk plus 1. Then we can manipulate this expression as follows. So phi r would equal phi at x k plus 1 plus a phi prime at some psi 3 multiplied by r minus x k plus 1. So this first expression here is basically the Taylor series for phi r expanded at x k plus 1 and writing out just one more term here. This holds for some cosi 3 value that lies between r and xk. And then using the fact that this guy is actually 0, and then we just have this term, which is the second term. So this is a, another expression for phi r. And we have this expression here also for phi r, and they are about the same thing, so they must equal each other. Okay, so let's set them equal each other. This is the left side here, and the right hand side is this expression. Then we see that we have this term, which is the arrow at step k plus 1, and this term, which is the arrow at step k. We can now divide both sides by this expression here and have just the arrow term on the left-hand side. And then we can take absolute value and get an inequality. So this gives us the following. x k plus 1 minus r in absolute value, that will be the left-hand side, will be less than the absolute value here to the power 3 and some constant. What is this constant here? 
well, if you had equal sign, this constant will be this expression divided by that. But then there are all these psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, which we don't know where they are. We just know they exist. So what one can do is to take the maximum value of this expression of psi, where this psi is just some value between x k, x k plus 1, or r, anywhere there. And we denote the maximum of that to be this constant m. And one can put m here and get the inequality. And we see that this is exactly what we wanted to prove, that is, a cubic relation of the arrow, which would lead to cubic convergence. OK, final remark. There are actually many other variations of Newton's iteration, which would achieve also cubic convergence. In fact, using any monotone smooth function phi of x, not necessarily the one we have in the derivation one, but you can use others. And, uh, and if you match the f, f prime and f second prime at x k and derive an algorithm out of it, this would also give a cubic convergence. Okay, that's all. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.